Good morning, folks. In Fusion, there is a setting in CAM called Override Work Coordinate System Offset. What does it mean? Uh, it's an incredibly powerful feature that I think is either misunderstood or just easy to, easy to not realize what it can do. I wanted to show you two different ways that we're using it here on these parts. These are valve covers that we make uh, for Stimpworks, which is our uh, aftermarket air-cooled Porsche company that we're kind of having fun growing on the side. And we're using our Saunders Machine Works puck chuck system to ho hold this fixture. This is the same setup that does all of our Saunders Machine Works aluminum parts. So when we need to run a Stimpworks part, we can, we can just drop this fixture on there and we're good to go. So what this means is we're using a zero point coordinate system. Don't overthink what that is. It's really simple. It just means that every fixture we have on this machine has a work coordinate system point, which is, which is the top center of this top left puck chuck. That means we never have to worry about probing our farts, our fixtures, and this Haas has 50 tool ATC, which can hold all of our aluminum tools, which makes it an absolute wonderful way to run these parts because there's just really no setup. Drop the fixture on, load your code and go. Our op run runs out of bar stock. There's extra material on all five sides here. So the coordinate system doesn't have to be perfect uh, for this op one. We're using G154 P8. Why are we using that? Well, the big reason is I don't want to use G54 because it's just too likely that somebody accidentally overwrites it. So we've chosen on this machine to use G154 P8 as the sacred work coordinate system for that back left puck chuck. I show this Excel table here real quick to show you that's 14 because Fusion looks at the work offset because Fusion looks at the coordinate offset as number 14, simply because one through six is G54 through G59. And then on a Haas machine, offset seven jumps to this 154 P1 and it increments up to 14. That's all relatively straightforward. Here's where we had a problem. Our op two is machining off the hat top and the rest of this top part. I want that to be really accurate. Now it's pushed up against hard stop rails on the right side and a hard stop pin back here. So it should be pretty close, meaning probably within five hal. But does anybody know who's made parts? A lot of times things aren't exactly perfect. And in this case, one example might be if this tool wear or for whatever reason, we have a thou or two difference of our overall outside profile that has no real bearing or problematic effect on the part, but it will mean that these holes, which are finished in op one, but need chamfered. Well, you'll see that chamfer is off. And I don't like that. So the easy answer is let's just probe it. Fusion makes this really easy. We can use a probing routine here to probe this left edge right here. That's going to update our X value. And we can do the same thing for Y, but we have a major problem, which is that this op two is also being driven off our zero point coordinate system. So for all intents and purposes, bear with me here, it doesn't have a coordinate system because there's nothing specific to this part. We just, we made the fixture in place and it's relying on knowing that the fact that the fixture's here and the coordinate system is over there, which means it doesn't really need a specific coordinate system for this op two part location. Here's the problem though, that G154 P8 coordinate system over here, this point is sacred. It doesn't move that puck chuck, unless we remove the whole puck chuck or take the table apart and put it back on, etc. It's not a value I ever want to change. What we're doing is kind of, I don't wanna call it the lazy way because there's an intent to it, but I'm going up to my Haas control. I'm copying the values of 154 P8 and I'm pasting those values into a random offset, happens to be G154 P73. What that means is every time I probe this part right here, it's updating G73, G154 P73, which is an only the offset used on this part. That works really well because it keeps 154 P8 sacred. You don't want that to walk or move. Granted on a part like this, it wouldn't, shouldn't rather move very much. I still treat these things as very critical and I would never want to uh, update or override P8, especially since it's used on all of our other products. But where the override feature really is cool and comes in handy is, let's say I don't want to type in those values on the Haas control. I know we're, where P8 is, and I'm just gonna probe this part kind of out of the blue. What you can do is turn this feature on, and I'm gonna say my work coordinate system offset, that's the override driving offset is 14. What that's going to do is it's going to use offset 14. Remember, that's the P8 that we already know is sacred and set. 
it's going to then probe that sidewall in right here, but it's going to update not P8 or 14, but rather it's going to update the coordinate system for this setup, which we see is listed right here, 79. 79, by the way, is the six higher than P, it is P73, sorry. That's where some of this gets confusing if I extrapolate, if I finish extrapolated this out, you'd see that offset number 79 is G154 P73. Two huge benefits to doing this. Number one, that means I never have to actually probe this part position over here. If I've got a good data on my machine and I've got good fixture modeling CAD, I can be probing a feature almost anywhere on the table, updating a new offset and never have to go type things in or even run the manual Renishaw probes. That's really powerful, especially if you're a job shop, if you're using a thing like a fixture plate where you've got good uh, locations across your whole machine travel, really a valuable tool. The other thing that's really helpful is you can turn on this out of position and you can say, hey, if it's out of position by more than a certain amount, we can see that tolerance range right here or feature tolerance range right here, you can pause, which is a great way for process reliability and overall safety. But if you were paying attention, you probably saw when I opened this probe, I wasn't using the override driving offset feature on that. Why not? Well, two reasons. Number one, because we're running this as production, we have dedicated P73 to a specific offset for this part. And so I don't need to drive the probing from P14. I could, I don't need to, so I don't have it there. But I am doing something else that I think is interesting and potentially helpful here in this sort of a setup and workflow, which is the first operation comes through and the part has a hat top. I need to get rid of that hat top to get access to my part geometry to accurately probe it. So what we do, is we face off the part and then we do a roughing operation, but all that roughing operation is doing is getting rid of most of the clearance material. We're leaving enough stock to leave. We're leaving enough axial and radial stock to leave that I'll never gouge the part, even if it's the position has slightly changed. And once that material is gone, we can then come in and accurately probe our updated X and our updated Y. But I don't want the facing and really I don't want the roughing to be an operation that floats around. Meaning if the first part I ran happened to be shifted for whatever reason, a little bit to the left, and the next one was be a little bit to the right, that is correctly going to be updating my P73 offset. And I want that roughing to always kind of be on center. So what I did was I took these two operations, I right clicked, add to new folder, and a folder is, folder is really just a pattern infusion without a pattern turned on. But what I'm allowed to do under post-process is do use that same override WCS where I'm running those first two operations off of 14, AKA the P8. So it's always gonna face and it's always going to rough in the exact same zero point system that we know is sort of sacred. And after that's done, it probes the part, it updates 73 and the rest of these coordinate systems run at the updated P73 to make absolutely perfect chamfers and finished parts. I would be remiss not to mention two things. Number one is that when we're using this coordinate system override here, it will update our X and it would update our Y. However, depending on how you're using this, you need to make sure at some point you either probe or manually enter your Z in as well. Uh, otherwise that will make for a bad day. And the second point is a tip of the hat to Devin over at DSI. They are now running their Fusion Friday help, free help sessions at I think two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I actually hopped onto the last one to ask a couple of questions about this. As usual, Devin had some really good tips and advice. So every Friday, if you're looking to either ask questions or just learn from, frankly, some folks that are product, uh, product experts in the Fusion world, head over to the DSI's Digital Manufacturing Collective. Again, it's free and they're doing free help Fridays. As always, folks, hope that was helpful. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.